The difference between 6.3 times 10 to the 15th and 6 times 10 to the 14th written in scientific notation. Uh, so difference means subtract. So we need to subtract these numbers. And when you subtract numbers in scientific notation, the exponents have to match. So we're going to change 6.3 times 10 to the 15. We're not going to change it. Uh, but we are going to change 6 times 10 to the 14 to be 10 to the 15. When you change the exponent to be higher, you make the number out front smaller. We're going to subtract these. And 6.3 minus 0 0.6 is 5.7. The answer is 5.7 times 10 to the 15, which is choice B. Find the solution to the equation. First thing we need to do is distribute. 20x plus 32 equals 8x minus 9 plus 10x plus 15. Next thing we need to do is combine like terms. 8x plus 10x. We're going to get 20x plus 32 equals 18x. Negative 9 plus 15 is 6. When you have variables on both sides, you move the smaller one. So we're going to get 2x plus 32 equals 6 minus 32 to both sides and we get 2x equals negative 26 divide by 2 divide by 2 we get x equals negative 13 choice b which choice is equivalent to the expression when you divide you subtract exponents but 10 divided by 2 it has no exponents so you just do 10 divided by 2 which is 5 a to the 16th divided by a to the 4th. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. So we get a to the 16 minus 4, which is 12. 5a to the 12th, that's choice a. How many solutions does the equation have? Let's distribute and get 40m plus 60 equals 40m minus 60. If this was a plus 60, then this would have infinite solutions because it'd be the same on both sides. This is not the same on both sides. In fact, when you cancel out the variables on both sides, you get 60 equals negative 60, which is not true. This equation has no solutions, none, A. Which choice is equivalent to 60 to the negative second? Let's do this problem without the negative. 60 squared is 3,600. The negative exponent takes the answer we just got and takes the reciprocal of it. It flips it upside down. So instead of 3,600 over 1, it's 1 over 3,600. The answer for number 5 is B. Which choice is not equivalent to the other three choices? Uh, let's get these all in the same format. Let's get these all in scientific notation. Choice A is already in scientific notation. Choice B, the number up front's too big, so let's make it smaller, 8.08. .08. When you make the number up front smaller, the exponent needs to get bigger. Uh, so right away we know it's one of these because, look, they're different. Uh, choice C, we need to make the x the number up front smaller, 8.08. .08. We made the decimal move twice and made the number smaller. The exponent needs to get bigger, so it's 11 now. So it looks like A and C are the same. This one, the number up front needs to get bigger, so the exponent needs to get smaller. They all have an exponent 11 with an 8.08 .08 up front. Uh, choice B is not the same as the other three. Which choice shows, parentheses, 5x to the third, close parentheses, squared, simplified correctly? So we need to square everything in the parentheses. 5 squared is 25. When you have a power to a power, like x to the third squared, you multiply those numbers. So 3 times 2 is 6. The answer is 25x to the sixth. That's choice B. If 9 to the m equals 1 over 81, what is the value of m? Our answer was a fraction, so our exponent must have been negative. So we already know it's between choice b and d. Uh, so either 9 to the 5th is 81, or 9 to the 2nd is 81. 9 to the 2nd is 81, so the answer is b. Simplify 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 5th. When you multiply, you add the exponents. 4 plus 5 is 9. The answer is B. Simplify 5 to the negative third times 5 to the third. 
Uh, when you multiply, you add the exponents. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 5 to the 0 is what we need. None of these say 5 to the 0. But anything to the 0 power is 1. So we're looking for choice B. So the answer is B. Simplify 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the negative 6. When you multiply, you add the exponents. So when we add 3 and negative 6, we get negative 3. None of these choices say 4 to the negative 3rd. But uh, choice C is equivalent. When you have a negative exponent, you can rewrite that problem without the negative exponent as long as you put the, uh, the same problem in the denominator. So the answer is C. What is the value of K in the equation? Uh, these two numbers are the same. This is in standard notation. This is in scientific notation. So we just need to figure out how far do they move the decimal. They moved it one, two, three, four times. And since the number uh, was a tiny, tiny number here, the exponent is negative. The answer is C. Which equation below has negative one half as a solution? So you could solve all these equations, or you could plug in negative one half into each of these equations and see if any of them are true. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we have negative eight times negative one half plus four equals zero. Negative eight times negative a half is four, positive four, and positive four plus four is not zero, it's eight. Four plus four is not zero, so it's not choice A. Choice B, if we put negative a half in here, we're gonna get 10 times negative a half, which is negative five. Negative five plus eight is positive three, not negative three. So it's not choice B. If we put negative a half in here, we're gonna get negative 10 times negative a half, which is positive five. 16 plus five equals 11. That's not true, it's 21. So it's not C, I hope it's choice D. Uh, four times negative one half is negative two, and negative two minus three is negative five. That is true, so it is choice D. Which choice is equivalent to four to the third in parentheses squared? When you have a power to a power, you just multiply the exponents. Three times two is six, the answer is C. Now if you did this on your calculator, uh, you could do all these on your calculator and find out that the only one that has the same value as the original number is choice C. Add. Write your no answer in scientific notation. So if we want to add these, the exponents need to match. So I always pick the lower one, make it higher. When you make the exponent higher, the number out front needs to get smaller. So this is 0.88 times 10 to the 18 plus 9.65 times 10 to the 18. When you add, you just add the numbers out front. 9.65 plus 0.88 is 3, 15, 10.53. And I see that two of these choices have 10.53, uh, but the question says write your answer in scientific notation. This is not in scientific notation. 10.53 is too big. It can't be 10, it has to be smaller than 10 and bigger than 1. So it can't be this choice. Um, we need to change this to be in scientific notation. So let's make the number out front 1.053. The number out front got smaller, the exponent needs to get bigger. That's choice C. In the equation, what value of A would make this equation have infinite solutions? For this to have infinite solutions, the equation needs to be the exact same on both sides. When we distribute, we get 6x plus 24 equals 6x plus a. For this to be the same exact thing on both sides, we need to make this a a 24, a positive 24, just like on the left. The answer is C. Which equation below will have no solution? Uh, so let's simplify each equation and see which one will have no solution. Uh, choice A has 8x on both sides, which will cancel out. And then we have 20 equals 5, which is not true. So this one will probably be the answer, but let's check the other ones. Uh, this one is a positive 2x, this one is a negative 2x. 
Uh, for it to have no solution, the variables have to be the exact same on both sides, and 2x is not the same as negative 2x. This one actually has a solution. Choice C, if we simplify this, we get 10x plus 15 equals 10x plus 15. This one will have infinite solutions because it's the same exact thing on both sides. So it's not choice C. And this one doesn't have a variable on both sides. This one is solvable. This one will have an answer. So the answer is choice A. What is the value of x in the equation 10 to the x equals 1 over 100? Our exponent needs to be a negative because a negative exponent makes your answer a fraction. So it needs to be a, b, or d. Uh, so now we just need to figure out 10 to what power is 100? Well, 10 to the first power is 10, so it's not that. 10 to the 10th power is a 1 with 10 zeros, it's not that. 10 to the second is 100, so 10 to the negative second is 1 over 100. The answer to 18 is A. Add. Write your answer in scientific notation. To add, the exponents need to match. So let's make this a 10. The exponent got bigger, the number needs to get smaller. We're not going to change the first number at all. Now that the exponents match, we add the numbers. 5 plus 0 is 5. 8 plus 2 is 10. 7.05 times 10 to the same exponent we had earlier, 10 to the 10. Solve for y. 3y minus 16 equals 39 minus 7y. When you have variables on both sides, it's a good idea to move the smaller variable. So I'm going to do plus 7y to both sides, get all the variables on one side. We get 10y minus 16 equals 39. Uh, let's get everything away from the variable. Let's do plus 16 to both sides, and we get 10y equals 55. Divide both sides by 10, and we get y equals 5.5. .5. Write this number in scientific notation. The decimal needs to go here in order to make a number between 1 and 10. So if the decimal is there, it'll be 4.3. So now we just need to count how many times the decimal moved. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It moved 9 times. Uh, and it needs to be a negative 9. As you were making the number bigger, the exponent needed to get smaller. A negative exponent makes a really small number. That's how I know this exponent needs to be negative. This number is really, really small. A negative exponent makes small numbers. This is the answer. Solve for x. Let's distribute first and get 12x minus 20 plus 1 equals 10x minus 39. Uh, we have some combining like terms to do over here. 12x negative 20 plus 1 is negative 19. Uh, we have variables on both sides. Let's move the smaller one. Get all the variables on one side. And now let's get everything away from the variable. So let's do plus 19 to both sides. Get 2x equals negative 20. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals negative 10. Subtract. Write your answer in scientific notation. Uh, let's make the exponents match. Let's make this 10 to the 8th, which makes this 0.99. Since the exponent got bigger, the number out front needs to get smaller not changing this number at all. Now that the exponents match, we can subtract. We're going to get 0.31 times 10 to the eighth. Now that would be our answer, but it's not in scientific notation. The directions say it has to be in scientific notation. So let's make this 3.1, which makes this number bigger, which means the exponent needs to get smaller. Solve for A. Let's distribute. Negative 12 times 2 is negative 24A minus 36. Hey, we have variables on both sides. We usually move the smaller one, but they're actually the same. So when we try to move one, they both get eliminated. And we're left with 48 equals negative 36. That's not true. 
So I cross off the equal sign and I say no solution. Simplify. When you multiply, you add exponents as long as the bases are the same, which they are. Now this t has a secret exponent of 1. So when we multiply it, we add all these exponents and we get 6 plus 10 plus 1, which is 17. t to the 17 is the answer. Solve for y. Uh, here we have a smaller variable. Let's add it to both sides. We're going to get 60 equals 20y plus 24. Let's get everything away from the variable by doing minus 24. We get 36 equals 20y. Let's divide everything on both sides by 20. And we get y equals 1.8. Write 9.04 times 10 to the 6th in standard notation. That means just move the decimal 6 times. Uh, and because this exponent is a 6, that means our number is a big number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We had to add some zeros because we didn't have room. When we add commas, the answer is 9,040,000. Simplify. When you divide, you subtract exponents. 20 minus 5 is 15. R to the 15th. Simplify. M to the 8th in parentheses to the 3rd power. When you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. 8 times 3 is 24. Simplify. Write your answer as a fraction. Well, let's do this problem without uh, the negative exponent. 50 squared is 2,500. The negative exponent takes the answer we just got, which is 2,500 over 1, and the negative exponent flips this upside down. That's called the reciprocal. So 50 to the negative second is this answer upside down, which is 1 over 2,500. You could have also written 1 over 50 squared. This is the same as this. If you answer this, you get 1 over 2,500. So either of these would have been acceptable for question 30.